Alex and Allison Gray are two of the most influential and radical artists of the last 30 years. Their psychedelic, transformative, and visionary work has been showcased all over the world. It's even featured as album art for bands like Nirvana, The Beastie Boys, and Tool. Alex is probably best known for his depiction of translucent and anatomically correct human bodies that force the viewer to examine the role of human spirituality and higher consciousness. But along with their paintings, the Greys also engage in performance art, sculpture, and installation art. And perhaps the most famous collaborative piece between them is the Chapel of Sacred Mirrors, a trans-denominational church featuring a series of Alex's paintings that has been lauded as one of the most important works of spiritual and transcendental art in the world. The Greys have also had an extraordinarily influence extraordinary influence excuse me on my artistic expression which is why it's an absolute honor to have them on the show today alex allison thank you so much for joining me hi abby hi abby <laughs> alex you're thanks a for having us of course alex you're a self-described visionary artist and often speak about your art as a way for people to develop their inner sight how would you say that your art facilitates that development well uh when people turn within and and uh, experience the creative, visionary imagination and uh, see it is another world and another dimension and they recognize the importance of this dimension, uh, then they want to translate it somehow. And uh, it's, I think it's the, a basic human motivation. And so seeing anyone do it and do it authentically from some kind of soul intuition is inspiration for any of us to pick up a pencil or a, uh, whatever kind of creative tool we like to use and uh, speak uh, the truth. Truth, goodness, beauty, all of these work together to find uh, an ideal expression through each of us. Indeed. And one of the most interesting aspects of your art is the anatomically correct depiction of inner body systems. You spent five years studying anatomy at Harvard. Why is scientific accuracy so important to your vision, Alex? Well, I think that science is uh, the uh, razor by which we measure the truth. And so my bodies, uh, rather than uh, focus on one gender or race are looking for a, a universal kind of expression. And so the uh, sort of skeletal and anatomical figure is the scientifically medically defined human being, and it's universal. And so uh, that's the aspiration is to find what unites us. Absolutely. Allison, probably the most famous project that you and Alex have collaborated on is the Chapel of Sacred Mirrors. Can you talk about how the vision for the church came about and what ideals the chapel promotes? The vision for the Chapel of Sacred Mirrors occurred uh, on our first uh, experience, our first journey using the substance MDMA. And we were lying on our bed and we were, uh, you know, our blindfolds were on. And coming out of that experience, uh, we both had seen the uh, the Chapel of Sacred Mirrors, and uh, we were you know, we weren't talking about it. It was a simultaneous uh, vision. And so, since 1985, when that happened, we have uh, been on a very interesting path toward how do two artists build a chapel? And that's and that's the story. I mean, the the mission of the Chapel of Sacred Mirrors is to build an enduring temple of art to inspire a global community. I mean, it's, it's really about the building of a temple to bring together a community that, is, uh, that so loves each other and so loves the community itself that they want to build a temple. Uh, that's beautiful, it. beautiful, Allison. And, and Alex, let's talk about your latest project, Entheon, which is an incredible new building that will feature your artwork. What do you hope to achieve with the newest installation here? Well. This will be a sanctuary of visionary art. Uh, Entheon means a place to discover the God within. And so it will feature uh, artwork through the international visionary art movement. Uh, there's many young artists alive today that are doing extraordinary works. And it's a uh, history of visionary art that is here to serve the awakening, uh, I think, planetary civilization. I think that that is what is next uh, in human uh, experience, 
is understanding that we're one uh, human family and that we have to uh, work on saving the mother planet. Really, that's what our quest should be about and not wars between each other. Absolutely. The revolution of consciousness. I, I can't think of an, another artist that depicts this as well as both of you. Allison, you and Alex have collaborated on artwork and life for nearly four decades. I mean, w I think what's so inspiring more than anything is the strong bond and spiritual relationship that you guys have held. How have you managed to, to keep that so strong? Well, I think these simultaneous visions have been amazing. I think it's our spiritual life, really, that keeps us together in our spiritual life. Um, you know, I grew up Jewish, Alex grew up Christian, but our spiritual life has uh, been revolutionized by uh, psychedelics. And so we find that that's true for a lot of uh, people and a community is gathered that feel this opening to spirit through the use of these, what we call sacraments, what we think of as sacraments. And to use them in a sacramental setting, you know, uh, well, it's science. It's science now. I mean, Johns Hopkins has proved it, and it's science. It, it's, it can cause mystical experiences, and people have them, and they want to gather together around that. So, that's that's been, I think, the glue to our relationship and having a project together, and many projects a lifetime together. We share a studio for 38 years, mm -hmm. so we're together in the studio all the time. We're always looking at each other's work, and we've influenced each other's work more than anyone or anything ever could. Amazing. Alex, you often feature religious figures in your work. Uh, you, she just mentioned growing up Jewish, growing up Christian, such as Buddha, Jesus. How does organized religion fit into your notion of spirituality? Well, I think that uh, humanity is evolving through various waves of uh, consciousness evolution. So each religion uh, sort of emerges at its proper phase. And uh, so now we have a multiplicity of many different approaches to uh, arrive at the divine. And I, we like to think in a way that, uh, that religion is a uh, united human expression. And by looking at uh, what unites it, such as the arts, uh, creativity runs through all the world religions. Uh, we wouldn't know of their stories or see their architecture or, or art and things like that. So creativity is something that runs through all of them. So we start to think of creativity as a uh, trans-denominational kind of religious orientation or spiritual practice. So, uh, and many artists uh, talk about when they uh, are doing their artwork, that's when they're in contact with this creative flow. This creative flow is none other than the creator working through us. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's our quest to provide a place for that realization. Uh, we don't advocate the use of these uh, sacraments and certainly don't do them at our uh, church. Uh, it is a, a current struggle, I think, that the sciences and the arts are trying to uh, find a proper context for these heart-opening uh, sacraments in our evolving society. And, and Alex, speaking of spiritual depictions, I can't help but ask you about the famous painting of Barack Obama um, in 2008. It took me by surprise just because I, I'm such a huge fan and, a, and you know, I just wanted to see personally what you were trying to express with the painting and do you think the president <sighs> has lived up to your portrayal of him here? Well, uh, I have to say the painting was done prior to the election. Uh, this was back in 2008, and uh, there was McCain uh, versus uh, Barack Obama. And I was at a tattoo convention, and I thought, let's, uh, let's start some conversations. Because of those two candidates, that was uh, the one I would go with. And uh, so I've appreciated having a president who can think on his feet and uh, who's, uh, you know, whip smart and has made some advances uh, in the health care and also in the uh, uh, gay uh, rights and things like that. I think this is really actually pretty important stuff. But there's been so many ways that I've been disappointed. 
So, uh, you know, I, uh, I've gotten a lot of egg on my face for uh, doing this and creating a kind of uh, unrealistic ideal for uh, any, anyone to uh, live up to. But uh, I love to see the best uh, in people. And at that time, prior to the election, he was uh, the first person, I think, to have been embraced by the world. And certainly in, uh, you know, <laughs> in relation to his predecessor, it, he was a much uh, uh, hoped for kind of uh, transition. So it was on that ride of enthusiasm that many artists, not just mm -hmm. myself, but actually dozens and dozens of artists prior to the election uh, made art about Barack Obama. And that's unprecedented. And you made him with the third eye. I did. That was unique. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I totally hear what you're saying. You, you know, and that's what's so amazing about your art is that you're putting up this ideal that you you want to see be achieved. It's not that you're reflecting something that already is. It's that this is the universal language that we can all hope to achieve, gather together, and and put our collective consciousness together to achieve. And Alex, I know that you've served on the board of the Center for Cognitive Liberty and Ethics. Uh, Allison, I wanted to go to you and and just talk about the notion of co cognitive liberty. Why is that so important? We have about a minute oh. left, by the way. Well, I, I really want to give it over to Alex. He is the, the, the great spokes model sure. for, uh, the, uh, for cognitive liberty. Let's, let's hear what you have to say. <laughs> Civil well, liberty. Look, the freer that our minds uh, are, the uh, more imagination we can put at the uh, disposal of uh, finding a way to get along and make something beautiful together as a human race. Uh, what I think is important now is to reclaim uh, our hearts, our compassion uh, for ourselves and for our mates and for the world, for our communities. Look for ways that we can put peace out in the world. That's why we make art. We think art is the opposite of war. We, we think that artists you know, uh, wage peace. Absolutely. And so that is our quest. You guys are both beautiful people, huge inspirations to millions of people around the world. Thank you so much. Alex and Allison Gray, a true pleasure to have Thank both you. Thank you, Abby. On.